Uh, now let's go from Glasgow to Cambridgeshire to the Conservative MP Heidi Allen, who spearheaded uh, the backbench opposition to George Osborne's tax credit cuts last year. Welcome to the Sunday politics. Heidi Allen, was Ian Duncan Smith right to resign? Unfortunately, I'm afraid to say yes, he was. I think he'd reached a point where, um, frankly, he'd had enough of the purse strings being pulled such that he couldn't deliver the well form reform he wanted to. And frankly, yes, I suspect he had no option. Mr Cameron says he's puzzled by the resignation and that the position of the government on these disability reforms slash cuts uh, had been collectively agreed. What do you say to that? I'd say, like a lot of things, you know, I'm learning as still a relative new MP. You know, you can keep your powder dry for so long and you're convinced by the whips, you're convinced by ministers that this is the right thing to do. But suddenly, you know, your conscience will kick in. It certainly did for me last year with tax credits. And I think the rumblings that were very open this time, more so even than they were with tax credits, that momentum was building. And I think he, and I suspect, just looked around him, saw many, many MPs saying how unhappy they were with this. And he just realised he just couldn't proceed any further. Would you have been one of the rebels of the government had proceeded with what was in the budget for the disability payments? Absolutely, yes, I would have been. Explain this. I think some people will be puzzled that uh, Ian Duncan Smith, perhaps under Treasury pressure over the years, has presided over a number of cuts to welfare. Now he's going, he's resigning over a cut that isn't actually going to happen as far as we can make out now. What's the logic in that? Well, I, I think first thing to say is I can't say for certain that it wouldn't have happened. You know, I've had no letter or no email coming from the Treasury saying that we're looking at this again. Um, so I don't think we can assume that it would have been stopped, actually. And a lot of what has been cut from Ian's point of view, so the tax um, credit taper rate, universal um, taper rate, universal credit taper rate, PIP, ESA, RAG, it's been coming thick and fast. And I think, as I mentioned before, it's just too much. He's had to deliver what were very revolutionary welfare reforms he wanted to do them the right way softening you know everything i talked about in my maiden speech about doing it gently allowing the minimum wage to rise beforehand etc but ultimately you know the treasury is you know that's the financial director of great britain plc and the treasury holds the purse strings and they stopped him delivering the policies the way he wanted to well given what happened to tax credits which was essentially a move to take away some welfare benefits from the working poor is it not rather puzzling that the Chancellor then moved in to, to an, an, an even more uh, a difficult group that, um, to deal with in terms of taking things away into the disabled and seemed to have learned nothing from the tax credits uh, um, U-turn? Well, I guess we'll see in the days and weeks to come because it's not, of course, just PIP. You'll remember the hoo-ha from the last fortnight of VSA RAG, this extra payment that was given to claimants mm -hmm. who've been ill for a long time and are returning to work. That I voted against also. What I'm hoping is that Stephen Crabb, the new Secretary of State, will have a very strong conversation with the Treasury and all of this will be brought back to the table again. Because frankly, I think we've made some poor decisions. Um, I think some of the areas of taxation that we've opted for instead are wrong. It doesn't send the right message that as a Conservative Party we can look after everybody in society. Because frankly, at the end of the day, it's only the Conservatives who can, because we do need that strong economy to be able to deliver any of this. But all of this, I am hoping, passionately is going to come back to the table. We have got to start again. Is it your view that it wouldn't be enough just to tinker with what the government was planning to do on the personal, um, the, the mobility, independence payments, that it should do what it did in tax credits and essentially scrap what it was planning to do and start again? Absolutely. And I've spoken to an awful lot of disability charities over the last few weeks. In fact, I'm putting myself through a mock PIP assessment during the Easter recess because I want to know what it feels like. I'm doing that at my local job centre. The PIP process, the whole assessment process, just doesn't work for so many groups of ill and disabled people. So tinkering with two tiny little points, frankly, is not good enough. For me, we need to look at the whole process again and start from scratch and work with these charities who understand the pressures that are put on these people so that we have a system that works right for them. Uh, your party is now in open warfare this morning. You've had a major resignation. People are referring to you once again as the nasty party. How big a crisis is this for the Conservatives? I've been thinking about that this morning, actually. Um, and trying very hard to keep my own wooden spoon in my kitchen drawer because it's quite easy to jump in and sort of join. 
in the Ferrari, but actually, um, and I'm going to try very hard not to, I actually think, in a funny sort of way, because there's been so much focus on the EU, the EU, the EU, this might actually be the sense check that we all need that says, hang on, guys, you know, we are, all MPs are good people trying to do the very best they can. This could be the slap to the face that we all need that says, hang on, come on, let's get back together, let's sort ourselves out, and remember that, you know, we are the party that should be looking after people. So perhaps it's the reality check that we needed, and in fact, I think it could bring us together. Well, if you are to be brought together and to have a fresh start on everything from tax credits to disability payments, is George Osborne still the right Chancellor to do it? It depends how he responds to that challenge. I'm hoping so, but we'll, we'll see in the weeks and months ahead. So the jury is still out? For me, yes. <laughs> and are his chances as Prime Minister now hold below the waterline, you reckon? Well, as I say, you know, I mentioned this on Radio 4 last night, you know, sometimes the strength of a man is how he picks himself up from a fall. So let's see how he responds. I think if this is attempted to be brushed under the carpet in any way, then I'd say absolutely not. His chances are over. But if he lifts himself up and shows that he is listening, you know, making mistakes is OK, providing you correct them before they affect people. And that's absolutely what he did with tax credits. And in some ways, that was a bigger thing because that affected millions and millions of people. So if he shows to us that he can do it again, then I suspect then he will be back in the running. But, you know, we need to wait and see what he's going to do with this. Hi, Alan, yeah, thank you. Though your wooden spoon, by the way, is always welcome on this programme. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much indeed. <laughs> it's just gone 11.30.